Hey everyone, it's Jan from The Last Stitch. In today's video, I will talk about how to sew more efficiently. And when I say more efficiently, I don't necessarily mean sew faster, although it can be a side effect of the method I will describe in this video. But when I say sewing more efficiently, what I primarily mean is to create a good, nice workflow that makes sewing more fun and also eliminates those mistakes that, well, can so easily happen when we are sewing, as we all know. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, as we all know, fitting is a crucial part of getting your garment to look right. But you don't really need to make a test garment for every time you're making a new pattern. Instead, a way of eliminating that, but also assuring that you will end up with a good result, is to actually use a template of a similar well-fitting garment. So for instance, I actually have several different patterns that I know, like, and trust that I place on top of the pattern that I intend to use. I check things such as the shoulder width, uh, the sleeve length, the ease around the bust area. I also, if I'm a bit unsure, check the measurements and compare those to well-fitting garments that I already have in my wardrobe. I also check the crotch shape and compare those to a pair of pants that I already have or perhaps a pattern that I already have and like. And when I have checked all those things, I've actually minimized oftentimes the need to make a test garment. So this is actually a way of both saving time and also assuring that the end result will look better even though you didn't actually do a test garment before you got started. So that's my number one tip. And my second tip, and I know this is both takes up money and space, but it definitely will help you sew more efficiently. And that is to invest in some type of cutting table. I've actually built my myself using uh, IKEA shelves and a cutting board, and on top of that, a cutting mat. And this is actually a really good tool because it also includes storage, but you don't really have to have that. But some type of folding table, for instance, that you can get your work area right, I mean the height, which is good for your body, instead of having to crawl around the floor. Again, this took me many years before I both had the time and the money to invest in that, but if there's one thing I think you should sort of move yourself towards when it comes to doing an investment, it's definitely see if you can get a good cutting area, because that will definitely make everything so much easier. And sometimes, you know, cutting can be the most boring part, so if you have some type of cutting space, well, it definitely will make it easier. Another tip that we're also ground cutting, uh, which is something I need to listen to myself, is that cut all the things at the same time. And that means also cut the interfacing, cut the lining, cut the pieces in another fabric. Don't pull all the stuff away and think you will do that later because it will drain your energy like no others. I mean, definitely take a break, take some tea, eat some cookies, do whatever you need to do to be mentally ready for the next step. But do cut all the things at the same time because that would just make the flow and the feel and the vibe so much nicer. In fact, I even got a tip because I struggle with this myself, especially when it comes to interfacing, is that you actually start by cutting the interfacing and then you move on to the, the fabric pieces because, you know, this mentally doing that little bit of switch can make this feel like a less of a cumbersome endeavor. So definitely, definitely, definitely cut all the things in one go. Now we all know the feeling of sewing the wrong pieces together. I'm definitely guilty of that. Been there, done that many, many times, which is why it's also really important to properly mark all your pattern pieces. Again, I got this great advice from you guys, is that these days I actually use a strip of freezer tape. And on this piece of tape, I both write down what the pattern piece is called and also if the tape is placed on the right side or the reverse side of the fabric, because that is actually something that has happened to me many times, especially if some fabric surfaces are deceptively similar on the front and the back. And if you're sewing where the light is not optimal and you know you're in the flow and you know what, well, it's really easy to not double check that. So by using the freezer tape method, it's actually minimized that particular issue, which has been a long ongoing issue in my sewing life. So that's a bonus tip to also write on the strip if, you're, if you have placed the strip on the right or the wrong side of the fabric. And once I've done 
labeling all the pattern pieces I like to place them in an easy to access way I, I either pin them on the dress dummy or I also sometimes pin them on the iron board where I have behind me if I don't need to use it for ironing which again makes it much easier to access the pieces when I'm sewing and it also prevents the thing which easily happens to me at least that so all of a sudden I have pattern pieces all over my sewing corner, some on the floor, some is in the sofa, you know, they're all over the place and I'm super, super confused, especially if I'm working with a garment that has a lot of pattern pieces. So find some type of way of storage the pattern pieces before you're sewing, that also helps a lot. Another thing I'm really a big fan of is prepping the machines before I start sewing. Uh, if I'm not just using a sewing machine, for instance, in lots of cases, I'm actually both using the sewing machine, my serger and my cover stitch machine. And I ideally like to have all three threaded up with the right threads, with the right needles, also samples done to make sure that I'm on track with the type of fabric that I'm going to use. Because yeah, it's a drag to be honest to thread all these uh, starting out but I do appreciate once I get going because it just makes the workflow much 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 smoother which is a bonus tip here which I also talk in, in another video that I highly recommend if you want to hear me talk about this more which is how I get ready to sew and in that video I talk about how I write down the steps of the sewing process not just to help me sew in the right order but also to help me gauge how the respective sewing machine should be set up and how I can use as many steps with one particular setup, for instance with a serger before I need to switch around. So that's a really good tip to write that down, just, just not just what you're doing but also what type of settings you need to have on your sewing machine because again that minimizes you know, your thinking process later on. So that's definitely something that I have found super valuable in my own sewing. As for setting up the machines and sewing more efficiently, it definitely makes sense to invest in more thread cones. Uh, it can be a little bit pricey and I don't do it for all the colors. Uh, I, but I do have a lot of cones for say black and gray and navy, which I sew a lot. Uh, some people also like to use a blending thread in the loopers on the cover stitch and their serger, which a blending thread is usually some type of gray thread because those will not be visible from the outside and what really matters is the needle threads. So if you're less um, obsessive <laughs> about having your threads matching your fabric, that's a great trick to sew more efficiently. I have not converted to the gas because I do like my threads to match the fabric, but I think it's a great method that definitely will help you sew more efficiently. Another thing that's really good is to set up your pressing station before you start sewing because one of the things that can happen is that you tend to think, oh, I'll press later, but a key, 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 key factor for a great sewing result is that you press before you start sewing another seam. And so yeah, if you can see behind me, I've actually, it's a very tiny corner, I've sort of managed to have all this set up. So I actually have the ironing board just behind me so I just need to rotate the chair and then I can swivel the chair and start ironing. And I have all these things set up, ready to go, because I know if that's easy, that will also make me more prone to press regularly instead of sewing a lot of different seams and then trying to press all the seams flat because it just doesn't work as well. You really do need to press as you go. Trust me on this one, I've learned it the hard way. Another way to sew efficiently is to not overcast everything because you know, to be honest, if the seam is to be enclosed and the fabric isn't super, super brittle or very, very prone to unraveling, you don't really need to overcast seams that will go, for instance, into a waistband or a cuff or any type of area that will be enclosed because to be honest they won't unravel. So for instance I never uh, overcast uh, when I do a waistband on a pair of trousers and also remember that if you're interfacing a piece again that will prevent the fabric from unravel if you're using a fusible. So another reason where you don't need to overcast because that can save a time and it also minimizes bulk which can again be an issue when you're sewing. So I am definitely not someone that overcast everything before I start sewing. In fact, uh, since I have a serger, I'm a big fan also of first um, sewing together the seam with a straight stitch 
And then, for instance, on this blouse, for instance, I have not uh, pressed the seams apart. Instead, I serge both layers of the fabric just like they do in Bread to Wear. To be honest, it works really well. It creates a stable, secure seam with no flimsy seam allowance. Again, on pants, you might want to press the seam allowance apart, of course, but when you're doing blouses and also on jeans, when you're top stitching, again, you don't need to have overcast the separate pieces if you're doing, for instance, a flat felt seam or um, a folded and pressed and stitched seam. You don't need to overcast, so that can actually save you a lot of time if you know where you can skimp on overcasting. And my last tip is that you can also sew things in a row, especially if you have a serger or a cover stitch machine. You know that you can just insert the second piece or the third piece. For instance, if you're serging both cuffs and a neckband for a knit top, you can just align them and just serge them and just insert the next one. Or you can let like um, a thread chain in between, depending if you want that extra thread to secure. But you don't definitely need to stop and stop. You can just feed in the next piece. And that is also true, in fact, for cover stitching. If you're sewing things on the flat, for instance, a sleeve that you are hemming, you not have hemming on the round, then you just place the next piece and you can paste, place a little bit of fabric scrap to prevent uh, any type of unraveling. I actually describe that in my book, Master the Cover Stitch, a method to use that. Because that will, again, save you time if you're going to enclose the seam and secure it in a, another manner, you don't need to stop and start and secure everything. Again, on a sewing machine, it's a little bit different because you definitely need that back stitch, but you can also definitely sew a lot of pieces in the row using a similar approach, definitely. So I do recommend, that's, that's the batching in me. Apart from that, I don't do lots of batching, but I definitely try to make sure that I can sew a lot of similar pieces. Same for shoulder seams, for instance, when I'm serging. I sew them one straight line, just let a bit of chain in between, and then I sew the next one, I don't cut the threads. I mean, it doesn't save a lot of time, but it definitely helps with the flow. So these were some of the tips that I use to sew more efficient. Now I'm super curious, what are your best tips? Do you agree with me? Do you have any other views? Please share in the comment section and keep the discussion going. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe for weekly video. And also you can check out my blog, thelaststitch.com, where I have lots and lots of sewing tips. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.